So my name is David Walker and I'm Head of Medicine at Anderson Moore's uh, Veterinary Specialists. Uh, we've been researching Alabama rot for the past six years. Um, so we were the first practice to be referred a case uh, in the United Kingdom. So when this disease first appeared uh, in the UK in 2012, uh, it was identified in the New Forest in Hampshire. Uh, so we saw four dogs over a three month time period with the signs of this disease. Uh, so we first reported the disease and then have continued to actively research the disease uh, since then. So Alabama rot is a disease that affects dogs. Um, it causes skin lesions or skin sores, uh, often below the elbow uh, or below the knee. Uh, and at that point, dogs are generally quite well. They might just be licking at the sore or they might be a little bit lame, but otherwise well in themselves. And then in a proportion of dogs over the next three days, as an average, they develop signs of kidney failure. So the sorts of things we'd be thinking about would be going off food, being tired and vomiting. Uh, and unfortunately, once they've got kidney failure, the, the mortality rate, the death rate from the disease is sadly very high. So up at around 80%. So eight out of 10 dogs will lose their life. So any age, any breed, any weight can unfortunately be affected by this disease. I think the key thing to say is that it's very rare. Um, so it's important that people are aware of this disease and they know about it, um, but we don't want people to panic um, because actually the number of dogs confirmed with the disease is still very low. So currently there's no cure. Uh, so we've learned a huge amount with our research over the past five, six years. Um, but at this stage, we still don't know what the exact cause of the disease is. Now any research into the disease needs funds. Um, there is now a national charity that's been set up called the Alabama Rot Research Fund uh, and, and that is helping us to move forward with research with the ultimate aim of um, identifying the cause and then hopefully in time moving on to find a cure. So we currently have no evidence that the disease can be passed on to people. I think that's a very important point to make. However, we have had some instances where two dogs from the same household have developed similar signs at the same time. So we quite strongly suspect there is an environmental trigger for this disease. Um, so two dogs from the same household have been out on a walk together, exposed to the same things in the environment, and then they have developed a variant of the disease. So often one dog in the household will develop a full-blown variant of the disease, so the skin sores and kidney failure, and then the other dog might just develop skin sores. Um, so yeah, it's certainly very important for a pet owner, if one dog in the household is affected, to very closely monitor any other dogs in the household as well. But as I say, we don't think it's dog-to-dog -dog transmission we think it's because they've been exposed to the same environmental triggers. So what we're asking pet owners to do is to keep a close eye on their dogs mm -hmm. during the time period that we see this disease, which is normally between around November and May. Uh, so it's old, uh, over the colder months uh, of, the, of the year. And the main thing that owners are looking out for are sores, typically on dog's legs. So often below the elbow, below the knee, occasionally on the face. You know, our, our advice is certainly not, you know, don't walk your dogs. You know, we all have dogs to enhance our quality of life, make sure they have a fantastic quality of life. You know, we want people to go out and enjoy the countryside. This is a very rare disease. Yes, be vigilant, but please don't panic about it. Some pet owners have been washing their dog's legs off after a walk, and I think, you know, that's probably a very sensible thing to do, not least to keep your house clean. Um, it may reduce the risk of this disease process, but we don't have the scientific evidence to back that up at this stage. So we're working very hard researching this condition. Um, in time, hopefully the cause will be identified. And once we've identified the cause, then yes, hopefully there will be a cure. But I think we're talking years rather than months uh, in terms of getting that information.